July is always a funny month because it's the last little bit of term of the school year. So like that teacher tired is 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 well in there. And uh, my particular last two weeks of school were just insane. Um, uh, but then I have a week of no school. Did I do much reading in that week? No, I did not because I was mainly tired slash I was still in school anyway. Um, so yeah, welcome to my July wrap up. Welcome back, if you are new here, welcome. My name is Katrina and I make bookish content here on this channel every week and then move reviews here at the weekend. In the description box below, you will find my blog and my Goodreads where I have got reviews of uh, all the books I finished in here. Yes, oh my goodness, all the books I finished. Um, what, no, except one. Mm, by the time you're watching this, potentially all the books are finished. Um, the majority of the books that I finished. Anyway, if written reviews are more your thing, head there for those. Um, yes, so four books and a part book I finished in the month of July. Couldn't even remember what month it was there. Um, and I went to a book event for one of these books as well. So that's very exciting. So the only ebook I read um, in the month of July is going to be confusing because I'm about to hold up a physical book. But I also have a full review video talking about this one. And this one is Love Me Do by Lindsay Kelk, which, yes, I have a review talking to you about why I love this book. You know, if you've been following the channel for a while, I am such a huge Lindsay Kelk fan she's you know she's my, my go-to um and yeah I made a video talking all about this this is a rom-com about Phoebe when she meets Ren and goes to LA it's a bit of a love story to LA as well and I mean you know that cover is what we need right now in the dark and dismal weather that we are having because it's August um so yeah I absolutely love this one. I read it in ebook, but I do have a signed physical copy and I will leave my review, full review for you linked up above. And it will also be linked in the description box below if you would like to grab yourself a copy to escape this dismal weather because it's nice weather in this book and it's a great story and just escape, escape the weather, please do. Um, and then on to, as always, audiobooks. Um, I listened to something that completely wasn't on my TBR um, and I don't know how this had fallen underneath my radar. Why was this not on my most anticipated books of 2023 list video? Again, if you haven't seen that one, I'll leave that linked up above as well because um, apparently it's not a comprehensive list. There are more than 23 books that are on my radar that I want to read. This is Catelyn Moran's um, What About Men? And um, this came off the back of her being asked questions at events and online and through podcasts because she's written all these books about being a woman and being a girl and more being a woman. Um, what About Men? Well, What About Men? And it's interesting because she delves into that kind of like gender bias that we have of like, okay, you're a woman, this is how you handle yourself, this is how you handle this situation, this is how you handle men in this situation, but what about the men? Who's teaching men how to go from boyhood to manhood? Who's teaching men the right and wrong things to do in these situations, especially these situations that we see coming up more and more and more in um, the media? And this kind of like addresses the Me Too movement a little bit as well, um, and it says, um, Ooh, Moran's number one, Moran's rule number one, the patriarchy is screwing over men just as hard as it's screwing over women. And that kind of gives you an idea of um, what this book's about. As with all Kat Moran, Catelyn Moran audiobooks, um, this one, I did find a signed copy, by the way. Oh, nice. Um, this one is narrated by her. And so you kind of like, I was listening to it in the car, in my classroom, in the gym, and just kind of listening with her in my headphones, in my car, coming out my phone, um, just chatting away to me. And it was great. I love listening to her audiobooks. If there's ever a moment when I'm like feeling the need, I can go back to her like How to Be a Woman book on audiobook and just listening to her like talk to me about how to be a woman. And this one addresses just like, you know, what about men? And it's just, it's really good and it kind of like 
questions, a few of um, the things that I've specifically thought about. And it's really useful for me as a teacher as well, because she does talk about education and boys in education and that kind of identity. We talk so much about um, puberty and consent and growing up in that kind of context of being a girl and going from a girl to being a woman. And um, But do we kind of devote enough time to going from a boy to being a man? And it is interesting looking at kind of the PSHE side of things in schools and like, is it gender biased or is it not? It's it's really interesting. And I initially thought, okay, so this is still going to be a very feminist book, which it is, but you know, the patriarchy is screwing over men just as much as they're screwing over women, which I thought was really interesting. So really, really recommend this one. I mean, again, Catelyn Moran is just a go-to for me. I will read anything that she's written and I just... I love it and I'm so pleased that I found a signed copy so I can go on my shelf. It's just over here. I have my Catelyn Moran novels, although my signed non-fiction shelf is just there. So um, yeah, it's, it's mad, this entire bookshelf here. Let me know if you would like a bookshelf tour, by the way. The entire bookshelf behind me here from floor to ceiling is signed books. So perhaps I go to um, too many book events? I don't know. Um, and then we listened to the new Bella Osborne, an invitation to Seashell Bay. Um, we have Nancy and we have Freddie and we have Alice and we have Dom. Um, and Nancy has her own business. She is an absolute boss bitch. She is amazing. Um, I loved how like strong and independent she was and I loved her hiring policy. And I loved the fact that she had taken Alice as a roommate because then that meant that we got to meet Alice who is a TA um, and works in this awful school setting. The way that she is kind of taken advantage of and spoken to with utter disrespect within the school setting and within the classroom and the things that she's left to do on her own within the school setting and within the classroom is absolutely disgusting and should not be happening and so I would like to talk to Alice about her career development really um really and uh, yeah they are both amazing strong women they're kind of having a moment in their own self-identity and then yeah along comes Freddie to be Nancy's PA and um, Freddie is uh, from very much the other side of life to Nancy he has more money than sense and his parents are basically like mm, you need to go out and get a job otherwise we're not going to kind of trust you to take on the family estate and um yeah Nancy gets to see a little bit of that side of Freddie's life but Freddie is actually a bit of a dark horse and I really had a soft spot for him and I really liked the way he and Nancy kind of reacted on the page with each other i really really enjoyed their chemistry um professional and personal chemistry their kind of banter i liked it a lot and then um yeah dom is a dad at alice's school who again has a little bit more to him than meets the eye and it's just wonderful and um, we get to meet a crazy peacock as well i mean you know who could, who could say anything wrong about that? And of course, being a Bella Osborne novel, there is a dog, of course. Um, and there is Seaside, of course. And it's just, it was just nice. It was just a nice story. And um, whether you read it in four parts, I read part one and then read the rest of it as a whole bind up. But yeah, it was just a lovely romance. And the audiobook was really good, I will say. It was a well done audiobook. And then, did I read anything else a whole lot? Yes. So I read... From Now Until Forever, which I listened to on audiobook, I think I would recommend not doing the audiobook of this one because there's quite a lot of detail that you need to take in. And if you're listening to the audiobook, you could potentially miss some of the detail and then be very confused about what's happening. Um, there's some kind of people who have multiple names, people who've been in multiple locations. I will say having the dual narrative works on the audiobook because there's two different narrators and I think that's great. Um, but I think that probably I would recommend doing this one as a physical or an ebook so that you can kind of see names on a page and understand who you're dealing with at what point. It's really hard to talk about this book without giving any spoilers. Basically, um, can their love stand the test of time? We've got two people who are kind of 
facing what um, being alive and what life means to them in very different ways. Um, and yeah, we have Vita and we have Ben and they're both very interesting people who come from very different walks of life and seeing them connect and um, interact and react together on the page was interesting. And I really can't say anything more about it without giving spoilers, but it's quite different from the Rowan Coleman's that I am used to, I will say that much. Um, and then, yes, the one that I read part of that is on my August TBR is True Story, What Reality TV Says About Us. I've specifically put it on my August TBR because I am really enjoying it. Um, and I'm probably about a quarter of the way through this non-fiction and I like to have a non-fiction on my TBR. And I like the fact that I've got a couple of non-fictions on my July wrap-up. So there you go. Um, so yes, four complete books, one part book, which is what the same as the month of June that's not too bad really considering how busy July was and how shattered I was in the month of July I think that's really good going like if you'd seen if it's in my schedule in July you'd be like I'm impressed you did any reading whatsoever Katrina um so yeah and on the whole, I enjoyed what I had read. Like the fact that I've got a standalone video about one of these and the fact that I'm like so highly recommending another of them without my standalone video says an awful lot. So as always, please do let me know in comments what you read in the month of July. Did you read any of the same things as me? Was there anything else like July release wise that I missed that I should be putting on my August TBR? Let me know, let me know. I will see you in those comments. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. Make sure you are subscribed and hit that notification bell because I have um, a book versus movie coming your way. I have some more movie reviews coming your way. I have a reading vlog and a Disney vlog coming your way. So you're not going to want to miss out on those. And um, yes, I will see you with my next video. Thanks for watching.